Remember the early 2010s? What a wonderful time. Ray William Johnson could say the N-word and still be the most loved channel. ABGN was still going strong. And that's kinda it. I really didn't watch anyone else. But around that time, around like 2011, 2012, something magical started appearing. Spooky shit. The creepypasta boom was going strong with classics such as Ben Drown and Slender Boy. And in between those classics, there's Sonic.exe. This story was the apex of all those pastas that went hyper-realistic and used gore and blood to shock you. Instead of, you know, actually using them in a context that works better at cementing fear, but whatever. We got guts, everybody! The success of Sonic.exe basically created the .exe genre, with examples such as Mario.exe or Pokemon.exe or Toy Story.exe This can just go on, just put .exe on everything like it's a fucking Sonic OC. The original story was written by JC the Hyena and uploaded to the Creepypasta Wiki on August 2011. According to the writer, the inspiration came about from this edited Sonic sprite, the author states in an interview. And I realized the potential this pasta had. I realized that nobody was going to make a creepypasta like mine anytime soon. How different it would be from all the others, having nothing that was satanic or typically paranormal. So I got to work on making the pasta because I knew that I was the only one who would actually bring something new to the table of creepypasta. Something different. I of course never really knew how popular my pasta would be until I started noticing fan art on DeviantArt. Boy, did that bring a smile to my face. The story garnered attention quickly and spread like fire, but it didn't reach its full potential until a year later when Dev NY5T Crimson, I think, developed the Sonic.exe game. After that, it just exploded. Fucking every person with a camera and a mic around was doing playthroughs of it. In the later years, updated versions of the Sonic.exe would release, each with a little more spooks than the others. Everything was going fine, the story was strong, it had something kind of like a mythos, people were trying to figure out who Sonic.exe was, what was his plan, shit like that. But then something kind of happened. People started to realize that the story of Sonic.exe was... well... awful. It was cliche, it was cringy, overused to blood, hyper-realistic shit, bloody plushies... Uh, it had all those tropes from the creepypastas that kind of helped the entire community go down. It was ruined by time, it really didn't age well at all. The entire story went from a classic creepypasta to a troll pasta in the blink of an eye, almost as if Sonic.exe was cancelled on Twitter.com. Not only the story went down, but the games as well, seeing how each update would include more cringy spooks and sometimes not at all, and some really, really <laughs> bad voice acting. The downward spiral of Sonic.exe reached its crescendo when the story was deleted from the official creepypasta wiki, which pushed the writer to post this incredibly cringy rant. I deeply regret to inform you all that I received some bad news. The admins of the Creepypasta Wiki I finally decided to delete my Sonic.exe off of the wiki, on the grounds that it was badly written and had too many cliches and it was a bad example of what should be a Creepypasta. Bull friggin' horseshit! As you can see, I am furious with the fact that my masterpiece, which has won the hearts of millions and had made a massive impact on the internet, is being brought down by a bunch of jealous, arrogant, retarded, furry haters. But that does not mean that I'm just going to sit down and take this lightly. Nope, 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 nope. They have been messing with the bulls, and now they call out the horns. Listen, everybody, I need your help with this. We are at war here. I want every... <laughs> reading this to get the word out. I want you to tell every other Sonic.exe fan out there, every fanatic, every artist, every follower of my creation about this. Tell your friends who are also Sonic.exe fans if they have to. Tell them we have to keep the spirit of the Sonic.exe alive. Make more fan art, make more videos, block the haters, praise Sonic.exe like you never have before. Build websites dedicated to his greatness, whatever you gotta do to keep him alive and strong, just do it. The deletion of Sonic.exe from the wiki is but a minor cut in our flower of greatness, my friends. And that cut has done nothing but further the spreading. And we are the pollen of this flower. We need to prepare for our victory over the haters. The haters need to bleed from their crimes. Rejoice, my fellow Sonic.exe fans. Our glorious little hellspawn shall have the laugh yet. This will be his ultimate victory. The absolute subjugation of the internet itself. This of course caused the author to be mocked extensively by the internet. And it seems the popularity of the pasta got to his head a little bit. Masterpiece. Masterpiece, really, dude. The author released two more mainland Sonic.exe projects, one being the incredibly awful Sonic.exe 2 and a remake slash reboot of the original, which I haven't read, but uh, I'm not hearing good stuff. Now here we are, almost 10 years after Sonic.exe, and it just feels like a relic of the past. 
as the creepypasta genre in general lost popularity about 2015-2016. The whole concept just got mocked by stories like Sonic.exe with sour use of blood, gore, and eventually channels focusing on pastas would veer the content to new directions. That, in combination with general negative reception towards the writer, caused Sonic.exe to be where it is now, a standard, a cliché. As far as I can tell, the creator now still writes, seems to have chilled out a little bit. In a recent interview, while still a little bit pissed off about his pasta being deleted, seems to have chilled out a little bit, uh, at least with this internet crusade thing uh, he posted in that rant. As for Crimson, he's still developing games. I haven't played any of them, but I'm hearing good stuff. So I guess everyone in this situation is going forward. That's pretty much it. I really wanted to come up with some like new information or new development coming, but it's just a situation where just time caught up with the story and it's just not viewed the same way it was viewed eight years ago, nine years ago. Something we all have to accept, time will get rid of everything. Good thing will seem bad later, or even bad thing will seem good later. But as bad as the story is, come on, tell me it didn't call your attention back in 2011, 2012. Tell me you didn't enjoy watching all those YouTubers play the game. Tell me it doesn't give you some kind of nostalgia already. Which is why, before we end this, we're going to take a look at the original story. But I won't be the one reading it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let someone else do it. So for now, I'll leave you with this. I'm a total Sonic the Hedgehog fan, much like everyone else. I like the newer games, but I don't mind playing the classics. I don't think I've ever played glitched or hacked games before. Though I don't think I want to play any after the experience I had. It started on a nice summer afternoon. I was playing Sonic Unleashed. I liked how you get to explore the towns in it, until I noticed out of my peripheral vision that the mailman had arrived and put something in my mailbox, as usual, and left. I paused my game to go see what I got in the mail. The only thing in the mailbox was a CD case for computers and a note. I took it inside. I looked at the note first and realized it was from my dear friend Kyle, uh, let's just call him that, whom I hadn't heard from in two weeks. I know that because I recognized his handwriting, though what was weird was how it looked. It looked badly written and scratchy and somewhat difficult to read as if Kyle was having a hard time writing it down and did it in a hurry. This is what he wrote. Tom, I can't take it anymore. I have to get rid of this thing before it was too late. And I was hoping you'd do it for me. I can't do it. He's after me. And if you don't destroy this CD, he'll come after you too. He's too fast for me. Please, Tom, destroy this godforsaken disc before he comes after you too. It's too late for me. Destroy the disc and you'll destroy him. But do it quick. Otherwise, he'll catch you. Don't even play the game. It's what he wants. Just destroy it. Please, Kyle. Well, that was certainly weird. Even though Kyle is my best friend and I haven't seen him in two weeks, I didn't do what he asked me. I didn't think that a simple gaming disc would do anything bad to him. After all, it's just a game, right? Boy, I was wrong about that. You could have called him. Anyways, I looked at the disc and it looks like any ordinary computer CD-R disc, except it had black marker on it written Sonic.exe. And it was much unlike Kyle's handwriting, meaning that he must have gotten it from somewhere, like a pawn shop or eBay. When I saw Sonic on the writing of the CD, I was actually excited and I oh, wanted to play it, since I'm a, I'm a pretty big Sonic fan. I went up to my room and turned on my computer and put the disc and installed the game. When the title screen popped up, I noticed that it was the first Sonic game. I was like, awesome! Because, like I said earlier, I, I, I like the classics. The, the first thing I noticed that was out of place when I pressed start was for a split second the image turned into something much different. Something that I now consider horrifying before cutting to black. I remember what the image looked like in that split second before the game cut to black. The sky had darkened, the title emblem was rusted and ruined. The Sega 1991 was now instead Sega 666 and the water had turned red like, like blood, except it looked hyper realistic. But the freakiest thing that was in that split second frame was Sonic. His eyes were pitch black and bleeding with two glowing red dots staring right at me. And his smile had stretched wider up to the edge of his face. I mean, I was rather disturbed about the image when I saw it, though I figured it was just a glitch and forgot about it. 
after it cut to black, it stayed like that for like 10 seconds or so. And then another weird thing happened. The save file select from Sonic the Hedgehog 3 popped up. And I was like, what the fuck is this doing in the first Sonic game? Anyways, then I noticed something off. The background was the dark cloudy sky of the bad Stardust Speedway level from Sonic CD. And there were only three save files. The music was that creepy caverns of winter music from Earthbound. Only it was extended and seemed to have been in reverse. And the image for the save file where you can see the preview of the level was just red static for all three files. What freaked me out the most was the character select. It only showed Tails, Knuckles, and to my surprise, Dr. Robotnik. Now, I was sure that something was up. I mean, how can you play as Robotnik in a classic Sonic game, for crying out loud? That's when I realized that this wasn't a glitchy game. It was a hacked game. Yeah, it definitely looked hacked. It was really creepy, but as a smart gamer, a 100 IQ 10 head, I wasn't scared. Or at least I tried not to be. I told myself that it was just a hack game and there's nothing wrong with that. Anyways, shaking off that creeped out feeling, I picked file 1 and chose Tails, and when I selected and got started, the game froze for about 5 seconds, and then I heard a creepy pixelated laugh that sounded an awful lot like that Kefka guy from Final Fantasy before cutting to black. The screen stayed black for about 10 seconds more, and then it showed the typical level title thing, except the simplistic shapes and different shades of red and the text only showed Hill Act 1. The screen faded in and the level title vanished, revealing Tails in the Green Hill Zone from Sonic 1. The music was different though, it sounded like a peaceful melody in reverse. Anyways, I started playing and had Tails start running like you would in any of the classic Sonic games. What was odd was that as Tails was running along the level, there was nothing but flat ground and a few trees for five minutes. That was when the peaceful music started to lower down into slow, deep tones, very slowly as I kept going. I suddenly saw something, and I stopped to see what it was. It was one of the small animals lying dead on the ground, bleeding. And that was when the music started to slow down. Tails had a shocked and saddened look on his face that I never saw him have before. So I had him move along, and he kept that worried look on his face. As he kept moving, I saw more dead animals as Tails moved past them, looking more and more worried as the music lowers. And he moves past more dead animals. I was shocked to see how they all died. They all looked like somebody killed them in rather gruesome ways. A squirrel was hanged from a tree. What appeared to be his entrails hanging out. A bunny had all four of his limbs torn off and a duck had his eyes gouged out and his throat slit. I felt sick to my stomach. When I saw the massacre, and apparently so did Tails, after a few more seconds, there were no more animals and the music seemed to have stopped. I still kept Tails to continue. After a minute passed and the music stopped, Tails was running up a hill and he stopped. It wasn't until I saw why. Sonic was on the other side of his screen with his back against Tails with his eyes closed. Tails looked happy to see Sonic, but then his smile faltered, obviously noticing that Sonic wasn't responding to him. If not acting as if he was totally oblivious of Tails' presence, Tails walked slowly towards Sonic. And I noticed that I wasn't even moving my keyboard to make him move! So this had to have been a cutscene. Suddenly, I began to have a growing feel of dread as Tails walked closer to Sonic to get his attention. I felt that Tails was in danger. No shit. And something bad was going to happen. I heard faint static, growing louder as Tails, but was inches away from Sonic, and stopped and stuck his hand out to touch him. The foreboding feeling in my gut was growing stronger, and I felt the urge to tell Tails to get away from Sonic, as the static grew louder. Suddenly, in a split second, I saw Sonic's eyes open, and they were black with those red glowing dots, just like that title image, though there wasn't a smile. When that happened, the screen turned black and the static sound was off. It stayed black for like seven seconds, and then white text appeared, forming a message saying, Hello, do you want to play with me? At this point, I was creeped out. I didn't want to continue with the game, but my curiosity got the better of me. When I was taken to a different level with the level title now saying Hide and Seek, 
This time, I was in the Angel Island level from Sonic 3, and looked like everything was on fire. Tails looked as though he was scared out of his wits this time. He actually looked at me and said frantic gestures to me, as if he wanted to get out of the area he was in as fast as possible. I was starting to get freaked out by this. I mean, Tails was actually breaking the fourth wall, trying to tell me to get him out of there. So I pressed down on the arrow key as hard as I could to make him run as fast as he could. A pixelated version of that creepy theme when you meet Shadow at the Ark or uh, as Robotnik from Sonic Adventure 2 was playing as I made Tails trek through the desolate forest, trying to help him escape from whatever he was trying to run from. Suddenly I heard the creepy laugh again, that awful Kefka laugh, right after 10 seconds should have passed as I helped Tails run through the forest. And then I started seeing flashes of Sonic popping everywhere on the screen, again with those black and red eyes. The music changed to what the suspenseful drowning jingle as I see Sonic behind Tails slowly gaining up on him, flying! Sonic wasn't running, he was actually flying! The flying poses Sprite was making looked very similar to Metal Sonic's flying pose in Sonic CD, except it was just Sonic, and he had the black and red eyes again only. This time he had the most deranged looking grin on his face. He looked as though he was enjoying the torment he was giving the poor little fox as he gained up on him. Suddenly when Trails tripped another cutscene, the music stopped and Sonic vanished. Tails laid there, starting crying for 15 seconds. The scene was rather upsetting to watch and I kind of teared up myself, but then Sonic appeared right in front of Tails and Tails looked up in horror. Blood started to come down those blackened eyes of Sonic as a grin slowly grew from his face as he looked down at the terrible, horrified fox. I could do nothing but watch. Just in a split second, Sonic lunged at Tails right before the screen went black. There was a loud, screeching noise that only lasted five seconds. The text returned only this time. It said, you're too slow. Want to try again with that god-awful laugh coming with it. I was so shocked by what had happened. Did Sonic murder Tails? No, he couldn't have. He and Tails are supposed to be best friends, right? Why would Sonic do that to him? I shook that shock feeling off as I brought back to the character select. The save file that had Tails was different. Tails was no longer in the box itself, but in the TV screen itself. Which was flickering with that red static. Tails' expression scared me. His eyes were black and bleeding. The orange fur had gone black, and he had an expression of anguish on his face. Trying to ignore it, I picked Nukles later. The laugh came again, and the screen cut to black again and stayed there for another 10 seconds. This time, the level said, you can't run. I was really freaked out by now. I couldn't tell if this was a glitch or a hack or some kind of sick, fucking twisted joke or anything, really. But despite my fear of what happened next, I, I, I kept playing. The next screen looked much different. It had the ground of the scrap brain zone, but the sky background looked like, a, looked like the main menu. It had the dark reddish cloudy sky, but it was the music that almost creeped me out the most. It sounded like Gygus' theme right after he beat Pokey in Earthbound. I also noticed that Knuckles looked afraid, just like Tails did, though not as much. But rather, he looked a bit unnerved. He broke the fourth wall just like Tails and looked as if he wasn't sure about what was going on. But I, I made a move anyways. He ran down the straight pathway in this dark level, and as he did, the screen started to flicker red static a couple times and that maddening laugh came again. Then, after a few seconds of noticing, I I noticed several blood stains on the metallic ground. I, I feel a growing sense of fear again, thinking something horrible is going to happen to Knuckles. He, he looked nauseated walking down this blood-stained path, but I still kept him going. Suddenly, as Knuckles ran, Sonic appeared right in front of him with those black and red eyes, and then red static appeared, and the static vanished, showing nothing with black screen with text saying, FOUND YOU! I was now scared. Sonic found Knuckles already? I mean, what the fuck is going on? Anyways, red static came again, and then I was back to the level. Knuckles looked like he was panicking, and Sonic was nowhere to be found. At this time, the high-pitched squealing from the Silent Hill 1's boss theme was playing. I mean, what 
was this some kind of boss battle with Sonic? I mean, I hope to God it wasn't, honestly. Uh, suddenly, Sonic appeared right behind Knuckles in what appeared to be pixelated black smoke. I made Knuckles turn and then punch Sonic, but Sonic vanished in black pixelated smoke before I could even land a hit. That terrible laugh went off again. Then Sonic appeared behind Knuckles again, and then I made him punch again. And Sonic vanished again laughing. Knuckles was panicking even more. And even I felt like I was going crazy. Sonic was practically playing with us. He was playing a sick, twisted little mind game with me and Knuckles. Another cutscene played as Knuckles fell to his knees and clutched his head sobbing. I felt his agony. Sonic was actually driving us both crazy. And then in a split second, Sonic lunged at Knuckles, and the screen went black, with another distorted screeching noise that lasted for another three seconds. Another text message appeared. So many souls to play with. So little time. Would you agree? What the hell? Just what is going on? I started to think Sonic was actually trying to talk to me through the game. But I was too scared to think that. I was brought back to the main menu, and this time, the second file box had Knuckles in the TV screen. His red fur had darkened to a reddish gray, his dreadlocks were dripping with blood, and his eyes were black and bleeding too, and he had to look, he had that look of sadness on his face. I began to think that those are the actual characters trapped in those TV screens on the save files, but I, I couldn't believe it. I just didn't want to believe it. So I shut off the game and took a break. I, I took a nap. I mean, I wish I hadn't, because then I, because I then began to have the most disturbing fucking nightmare. I was in pitch black darkness, though I was under the light given off by a lamp that hung high above my head. I could hear the cries of knuckles and tails nearby. They were saying stuff like "Help us!" and "Why did you give us to him?" and "Run away before he gets you too." Their cries died out as I heard Sonic's laugh. His laugh! It sounded a lot like the distorted Kefka laugh. You're a lot of fun to play with, kid. <laughs> oh no. Just like your friend Kyle, though he didn't last long. I was scared and looking around for the source of the video. It won't be long now until you join him and all the other friends. Oh, I saw him, uh... I saw him walking towards me, flickering in and out in several directions. You can't run, kid. You're in my world now, just like the others. When he grabbed me, I saw his bleeding black and red-eyed grinning face. I woke up with a fright. Oh, thank God. After a, a couple of hours, I decided to continue playing the game. I mean, I don't know why. I, I, I had to know. I, I had to figure out why this was happening. So, you know, I flipped on the computer, turned on the game, and selected Robotnik next. I thought this was wacky. <laughs> <laughs> playing as Robotnik, but anyways, the level title appeared again, and this time it said dot dot dot, which I found really freaky. This time I, f I was in some kind of hallway, I didn't know, I didn't really, it didn't really look like it was from any of the Sonic games, I mean, really? Though it had the pixelated style, the floor was this shiny and checkered pattern. The, the, the walls were a dark grayish purple and with animated candlelights and a few dark blood stains here and there. Yeah, no big deal. And there was a large dark red curtain hanging above on the top part of the screen. I mean, every 12 seconds or so, that curtain would sway very slowly. But whenever you're playing the game, I mean, you barely see it move. The music was oddly pleasant. The piano playing a rather sad yet peaceful song, but I, I knew better. This was the song that played on Hill Act 1, only it wasn't in reverse. Robotnik didn't, didn't look entirely nervous like Tails and Knuckles did, but he did have a suspicious look on his face, as if he was just a bit paranoid. He did a little animation when I just left him standing. He turns his head to the left, and then to the right, and at least twice, and then shrugs at me, as if he has no idea where he was or what was going on. Even though I was scared out of my mind about what was going to happen, I had Robotnik continue onward. He did his usual running animation, you know, when you beat him at the end of a classic Sonic game and you chase him, as we continued going down through the hallway. And then I stopped at a long flight of stairs leading downwards. And now I was nervous. Even Robotnik seemed unsure of himself, though I pressed onwards. As I led Robotnik down the stairs, I noticed that the walls have gotten darker and more reddish. The red torches are now in eerie blue, and we landed into another hallway. This one was longer than the last one, or at least it felt like it. And then we headed down another flight of stairs. This one was much longer, though it took at least one full minute. And then I heard that horrid Kefka laugh again, and the music slowly began to fade until it was quiet. 
As it did, the walls turned more dark red and the torches were a black flame now. When Robotnik landed into the third hallway, I noticed he now looked really creeped out. Though he tried to hide it, I couldn't blame him. I mean, I was scared too. Suddenly, Sonic popped right in front of Robotnik in the same way he did Duck. He did Knuckles and then Red Static! The Red Static lasted just 15 seconds. And then it showed me the most unpleasant image. The image showed a hyper-realistic of Sonic standing in the darkness where you could only see his face while his head and torso faded into black and when i say hyper realistic oh i fucking mean he looked so real that you could actually see the lines in his blue fur as if you could actually feel the fur if you touched the screen and his face oh god oh god he had the most horrifying smile i'd ever seen and that's saying something considering i saw that image at the start of the game his eyes are wide and black and once again crying blood, which looked hyper-realistic, and there were two small growing red dots in the black eyes staring right at me, as if they were staring into my mind. His grin was wide and demonic, it literally stretched to the sides of his face like a Cheshire cat, except Sonic had fangs, very sharp fangs, much like the werehog's teeth, except more vicious looking, somewhat yellowish from the look of it. He had stains of blood and small bits of flesh on his lips and fangs as if he ate some animal. I stared at that gruesome image for a good 30 seconds, and never taken my eyes off it. I felt as if he was actually looking at me, smiling at me. That face, it took 10 seconds for it to etch itself into my brain for good. Then the screen flickered with the red static three times, and on the third time I heard the Kefka laugh, except it sounded like it was so distorted, demonic even. It went back to the image, except this time it was the text again, though it was really messed up. But it was pretty much one of the most horrifying things I looked at since I had this game. I am God. It was when I read that message, looking at me, looking at Sonic when it hit me, I realized right there and then, Sonic was a monster. A pure, evil, sadistic, all-powerful, nightmarish, demented monster, and all of his victims, including Tails, Knuckles, Robotnik, and possibly Kyle, are just his little toys. And the game is the very gateway into his chaotic, nightmarish world. And the very hell his victims are trapped in. Suddenly, in an actual... Split second, I screamed as Sonic lunged at the screen, screeching loudly with his mouth wide open in an unnatural length, revealing nothing but a literal spiraling abyss of pure darkness before the red static came again. This time, much louder and distorted, so loud that it hurt my ears. I, I yelled and grabbed my ears as the red static screeched for a good seven seconds. And then it stopped and showed nothing but black screen. As I sat there staring at the black screen, one last text came up. Ready for round two, Tom? The Kefka laugh, now sounding more clear as if Sonic was right behind me, played again three times as I looked at the text in shock and confusion. Then I got booted back to the main menu, and this time the third save file had a TV image of Robotnik in the same tormented state as Tails and Knuckles. Robotnik's skin turned a dull gray, his mustache drooped and his blackened, it had black and his his eye his glasses broke and blood is coming from them and he had a mere dead like expression on his face. I looked at tails, knuckles, and robotic and I kinda cried a little bit. I pitied them for the agony they're going through. They're fucking forever trapped within the game, forever tormented by that horrid hedgehog. And always will be. Then the computer shut itself off, and I couldn't turn it back, no matter what I did. I sat there for maybe 25 seconds, horrified by what had just happened. Sonic is the very embodiment of evil. He tortures people who play his games in more ways than one. And when he gets bored, he drags you into the game. Literally drags you into hell. Where he can play with you always. As his toy. I can't get the game out of my computer, I think it's stuck there. But at least I managed to turn it back on now. After I sat there for 25 seconds, I heard a voice right behind me, like a whisper. Try to keep things interesting for me, Tom. I turned around to see where the voice came from and what had, what I'd saw made me scream. Sitting on my bed right there, staring right at me, was a sonic plushie, smiling with bloodstains under its eyes.